Good morning, U.S. history. It is Wednesday morning, and we're going to get started. We have a lecture today, playing a little Imagine Dragon Dragons for the morning, getting us psyched up. As you can see, we've been on week five. Thank you for all of you that are working diligently throughout the week and getting work done. That way it's not so overwhelming. Today we have probably about a 20 minute lecture. We're gonna start talking about the effects of this Cold War tension that we were looking at yesterday. So we've got some lectures and notes. You have a little assignment that's embedded in this lecture, so you have to watch the entire lecture in order to do well on this assignment. This is not a dice assignment. This is for points, but you will see you're gonna to need to watch the entire lecture in order to know what the assignment is. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's jump into our presentation for today. I'm gonna to move myself. I don't know how I ended up up there today. Um, but our presentation for today is we're looking at the effects of that growing tension between the US and the USSR. Actually, I'm gonna jump out of here. Remembering that the thing that I want you to keep in mind is that these are all effects of the fact that the Soviet Union espouses a political and economic ideology, meaning their idea of running a good political or government system and an economic system is centered around the idea of communism. That idea that everybody has an equal share that the nation controls and owns all of the property, all of the industry, and then the profits are shared by the people. That's the ideal idea behind communism. Doesn't always work that way, okay? And then of course, America saying, no, that's not how you should run a government. That's not how you should run an economic system for the United States and some of its allies, Great Britain, France, the idea is, or the ideology is democracy and capitalism. Democracy being the type of government where all the people participate. And of course, the um, economic system being capitalism, where individuals control property and business and do as they wish with their money. Um, of course, there is a taxation system that goes with that in order to run government aid programs, to run infrastructure programs, such as building roads, um, running police uh, stations and fire stations, things like that. So remembering that this is really kind of the biggest source of tension between the U.S. and the USSR, and then the effects that we're going to talk about today. So let's go ahead. Let's jump back into our PowerPoint. And again, your subtitle for today is Effects of the Growing Tension Between the U.S. and USSR. So first, let's go back to that whole thing that's going on in China. OK, the fall of Chiang Kai-shek. So Chiang Kai-shek who we supported, the United States supported, not a great leader in China, but not communist, not like Mao Zedong. Basically, Chiang Kai-shek loses. We know that because we took those notes on, the, on Mao Zedong and his rise to power. The United Nations, which has developed since um, the end of World War II, this is an organization that's going to consist of many world leaders from all of the allied countries, from all of those winning countries of World War II. And their job is to settle disagreements that happen throughout the world and hopefully serve as a mediator or somebody who's in the middle that kind of settles an agreement between two people that are fighting. So it would be like, for instance, if let's say that um, Leah was fighting with um, Taya, that they were going at it, they don't like each other, and all of a sudden Kevin steps in and says, hey, let's sit down, let's talk, I'll help you guys talk this out, 
Okay, so the United Nations, that's their purpose. That's why they were established, thinking that maybe if we would have had the United Nations before World War II got started, maybe the whole thing wouldn't have happened. And remember, if you remember, that this was the idea of Woodrow Wilson. He wanted a League of Nations after World War I, but it didn't happen. The United States didn't even want to be a part of their own president's idea. And so it didn't happen, and therefore, Possibly it could have prevented World War II. Um, but now after World War II, we're like, mm, Wilson was onto something. Wilson's been dead. So he never knew that, well, that actually was an idea that the world would espouse. Um, but it happened after World War II. So the big five um, of the United Nations, these are those that uh, countries that um, are kind of the biggest of the United Nations and it included US, the USSR, Britain, China, and France. So when Chiang Kai-shek loses its leadership, the United States or the United Nations steps in and says, well, do we vote to just let China do what they want to do and let this Mao Zedong take over? And everyone agreed except for the US. The US was kind of like, no, we do not want this Mao guy. That means that communism is going to be in over two thirds of Europe, of Asia. And we're really afraid of this idea of communism really spreading throughout the world. So the United Nations let Mao Zedong kind of rule, let Chiang Kai-shek fall uh, from power. Um, but the United States was not super happy about this United Nation decision. That's kind of it in short. The United States was very concerned about communism spreading, okay? And here we have a picture of Uncle Sam and the Soviet Union being represented by a bear, okay? That's usually a common symbol for the Soviet Union, the USSR, um, is the bear, the Russian bear. And so um, the United States was making policies that would hopefully remove any opportunities for communism to spread. Unfortunately, China had turned communist under Mao Zedong. And of course the USSR is communist. So the United States was kind of like, okay, no more, stop, okay? So the US was worried about other countries turning to communism. So they established two very important programs, one called the Truman Doctrine, and one called the Marshall Plan. So between these two programs, the idea was to help countries resist communism. Okay, let's talk about this. The Truman Doctrine. All right, so the Truman Doctrine, the idea is to support free peoples resisting attempted subjugation. I know that's a lot of words there. I'm going to move myself so you can see. Okay, so it's nothing really huge. I thought there might have been something underneath there. Um, so basically, the idea here is that if you want to practice democracy in your country, we're going to support you. Don't feel like just because your country is situated close to the USSR that you have to be communist. Don't feel that peer pressure. So the countries like Greece and Turkey that are close to the USSR, if they wanted to be democracies, the US would help support them by giving them, as you can see Uncle Sam doing here, money. Helping them to rebuild their countries after World War II. Remember, these are war-torn countries because the war was fought over there in Europe. So the idea was if the United States can help financially these countries institute democracy, they won't fall to communism. Because the fear was that if one country falls to communism, another will fall to communism and another, just like dominoes, how you can set up a track of dominoes, click one down and they all fall one right after the other. That's what we were fearful of, the domino theory. OK, so we said, we'll support you. We'll give you money. 
If you want to build democracy, we will help you. This is how we start our kind of national debt a little bit is because we were loaning a lot of money out to countries that were trying to resist communist takeover. All right. The Marshall Plan was an extension of the Truman Doctrine. Okay, and of course it was called the Truman Doctrine because Harry S. Truman was still president right after the end of World War II. So the Marshall Plan allowed for nations of Europe, including the USSR, to also draw upon money. So it said, all right, everybody else that's trying to clean up after World War II, you can borrow money too. See, the idea behind the Marshall Plan goes back to the old idiom that says you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. The idea is if we're being really friendly and nice and offering you money, you're going to go and see us as the good guy. Democracy is a good guy. Versus if we're saying, no, you've got to be democracy and we're angry about it and this is what you have to do, then people are going to see us as the bad guy. So the Marshall Plan kind of is the honey. It allows other countries to see the United States as the good guy. It even says, hey, USSR, you could get money. What bad guy offers money to their enemy? No one. So it makes us look really good. And of course, the USSR never took us up on that offer, but it makes us look very good. It was a program of economic recovery from the war. It was basically U.S. financial aid. OK, and many countries did take us up on it. And of course, because they did, we did help them. They continued to practice democratic principles. And that kept them in the democracy team versus going over to the communist team. Does that make sense? All right, right now I want you to stop for a second and look up from your notes, and I'm going to give you a code word. We're gonna play a little game because you'll see why I'm doing this today. Um, third hour, people. If you are in third hour, I want you to write down the code word Pablo. P-A-B-L-O, Pablo. Write that down in your notes. Sixth hour, your code word is Pena, P-E-N-A. Write that down. We'll come back to that. I'll tell you why I'm doing this. All right, let's continue. So another major effect of the Cold War tension between the US and the USSR was the establishment of institutions of divisions of the government that could help us figure out what the Soviet Union is doing. See, you have to remember that the Soviet Union is, in a way, our enemy, and they're keeping things quiet. So we established the CIA and the National Council. The CIA, of course, standing for Central Intelligence Agency. So the CIA gets established and the National Council gets established to inform the president on security issues. The CIA is a very quiet group of intelligent officers um, that consists of investigators, um, psychologists, all kinds of different people, engineers, technical engineers that establish spy technology. All right, this is 007 stuff, all right? And so, they're going to try and spy and find out what are those communist countries like the USSR and China doing without them knowing we're spying. Okay, so this starts some of that underground tension. Because remember, we need to find out, is the USSR building more of these atomic bombs? Right? What's their intention with those? So... We established the CIA and the National Council. The USSR does the exact same thing, and they establish the KGB, and if you speak Russian, 
go for it there. I don't know how to say that, so I'm not even going to try. KGB stands for those words in um, those words in Russian. The K word, the G word, the B word <laughs> translates into the Committee for State Security in Russian. They establish their CIA counterpart to do the same thing to us, to find out what we're doing and spy on us. So this is the CIA and the KGB, and these are an effect of the Cold War. They, the, this is the start of those institutions was because of the Cold War. All right, so with that said, I thought I would do a little CIA KGB thing with you guys today as your assignment. So you wrote down the first word for third hour and sixth hour, you wrote down your word. Third hour, your secret number is 87. Sixth hour, your secret number is 93. Now, what your job will be to do is to take a document, write down the name and number combination that I gave you, and upload it to our assignment. That will tell me that you watched our lecture and it's a very CIA thing to do is using some of this coding. Guys, that is it for today. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about a huge topic or sorry, Friday, we're going to talk about a huge topic and one of the biggest effects of the Cold War that kind of start off this Cold War is the Berlin airlift. So we'll be talking about that. We'll have a short little dice assignment associated with that. Guys, I'm going to let uh, Florence and the machine take us out today. I hope you have a great Wednesday and you stay warm. And yeah, I will see you guys on Friday. Bye.